And welcome to Fort Collins, Colorado. The wind gusting at 25 miles an hour. A perfect night for Mountain Division football in the rugged Mountain West Conference. Air Force has been red hot. They've won four in a row. Colorado State has turned around its season as well. Two of the hottest teams in the Mountain West headed your way tonight inside Canvas Stadium. And welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Nationwide. Mountain West divisional standings look like this. Both of these teams reside in the Mountain Division. Air Force still is alive to win the division title and a three-way tie for first. The Falcons would claim the championship. CSU trying to work its way up those standings. Great to have you with us. As always, it's chilly tonight. We're ready to go. Kelly Stauffer, Lauren Sisler, and Roy Philpott. And Kelly, we've got two teams tonight playing their best football this season. You know what has happened is that adversity that both of these teams went through early in the year has really became their friend. I think both teams are playing their best football maybe by far right now. Yeah, CSU got off to a 1-5 and five start. Air Force at 3-2, and two, but this team right now looks vastly different than what it did in the early part of the season. Yeah, and that's that adversity that we talked about. And this has been kind of a long and winding road, and both teams envision something better to start it. But it's Air Force that dropped to games to Boise State and a heart-wrenching game to Navy. They go on to win four in a row, a dominating performance against Utah State to become bowl eligible. And Colorado State started a disastrous one and five. And on the way, they lost their starting quarterback once again, Colin Hill. They were squarely at a crossroads and they go on to win three in a row. So my question tonight is, which one of these clubs can claim that Ram Falcon trophy by maintaining the momentum that they both gained. Well, it's been a pair of Jacksons that have led the charge for both of these teams. Timothy Jackson for Air Force, Warren Jackson for CSU. Yeah, Timothy Jackson is at fullback, but he's 6'3", about 200 pounds, and he brings speed. And Warren Jackson, 6'6", 220. How do you cover that guy? That's the question that Air Force is going to have to answer defensively here tonight. Well, they're trying to win the Ram Falcon Trophy, and this series has been dominated by the Falcons. They've won the last three, 11 of the last 13, and in fact, CSU's less last victory coming back in 2015, Mike Bobo's first season. So a rivalry game, a lot at stake, and Lauren, you know as well as anybody else how important this matchup is this evening. I'll tell you, Roy, this game feels a bit different this season for the Air Force Academy. They're playing for state pride. Going up against Colorado for the first time since 1974, they get the overtime win, and afterward, Cade Remsburg said, we want to be the kings of Colorado. So tonight, as they battle for the Ram Falcon Trophy, they are also battling for bragging rights here in the state championship. Temperatures are dropping. The wind is gusty. It's perfect weather along the front range for these two outstanding rivals. CSU taking the field as we speak. Falcons right behind them. Kickoff is headed your way next. Back here at Canvas Stadium, Air Force and Colorado State. He said to take the field. Just about ready to go in this Mountain Division showdown along the front range. Kelly Stopper, Lauren Sisler, Roy Philpott, a pair of coaches that know each other very well, and Troy Calhoun and Mike Bobo. Yeah, and I think both of these coaches, Roy, as we talked about that early season adversity, and you had that moment where the season could go off the rails in a hurry. Both of these guys have coached their teams really well through that rough period, and they come in right now playing probably their best football of the year. Chilly evening in Fort Collins. Winds are expected to die down as we get deeper into this one. Gusting now up to 20 miles an hour, and that temperature's already plunged even further than the 51 you're seeing on your screen right now. Yeah, on the field before the game, that wind was howling and especially affected the, the kickers. They just couldn't quite figure it out from our left to the right-hand corner, and the kickers were having an issue with it. But I think it's died down considerably since then. Rams won the coin toss and will receive. Falcons off to one of their best starts of the decade. It's 7-2 and two coming into tonight. Underway in Fort Collins. And a touchback. Put the football at the 25-yard line. Our first look at Patrick O'Brien, 
California native, a redshirt junior, began his career at Nebraska before electing to transfer here to CSU in 2018. And he's taken over for the injured Colin Hill. Kelly, he's averaged over 300 yards a game through the air in his first six starts of the year. And the confidence in that young man has been building weekly. We'll see if he takes another growth step tonight. Play action on first down. The freshman Dante Wright corrals it and ushered out near the 30-yard line. A good start as Fedula ushered him out. Well, it's going to be vitally important, Roy, that Colorado State gets off to a good start. The way that you defend the triple option from Air Force is to get a lead. And Colorado State needs to execute extremely well early in this game. After a gain of six, second down and four, O'Brien directing traffic. His confidence has improved by the week. Still working on his footwork and fundamentals. He'll hand it off. Marcus McElroy springs loose for a moment and lays the wood near the 45. That's a first down. Stopped by Zane Lewis. Let's take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players of the game tonight. And we start with wide receiver Warren Jackson, 6'6", 220. How do you defend that side size if you're Air Force? And then Fafita, the massive nose tackle that is deceptively quick in tight spaces. Colorado State's going to have to move Fafita in order to run the football here tonight. Troy Calhoun told us yesterday Fafita the most mentally tough player that he's coached at the academy, which speaks a lot. After a gain of 14, play action. There's Jackson. There's another first down. Into plus territory, Grant Donaldson in coverage. That's a gain of 11. And that's a great sign. Decision-making by Patrick O'Brien early. There was a go route down the field by Dante Wright, and that was O'Brien's first look. He comes off of number one and gets to number two and finds... Warren Jackson and if all else fails just how do you get the ball to number nine is the rule of t this evening Rams have been dominant on opening possessions this season you saw the numbers McElroy pick up a couple gain of two maybe three on first down Jackson can really make a coaching staff look pretty brilliant Kenny and, and quarterbacks a lot of times you can force balls into 6 6 2 20 and he will make you right a lot of times and we know the relationships that has developed between Patrick O'Brien since he took over for Colin Hill and Warren Jackson. Good quarterbacks find out who their alpha is and get him the ball in volume. Right in motion, the give to McElroy and a punishing finish close to a first down. It'll be stopped about two yards short by DeMonte Meeks. Now, Roy, it was fascinating for, for me to talk to Mike Bobo yesterday about the effect that Air Force's offense has on his own play calling approach. And you have this sense that you're going to have probably, what did he tell us on average, three less drives than normal. So the, the thought is that you would want to do more with less, but you don't do that in the first half. But this is a really important early third and two right here for Colorado State. Falcons have won their last four. CSU their last three. Quick toss incomplete. O'Brien kind of lost his footwork there, Kelly, looking for Jackson. Milton Bug in coverage. Fourth and short. And fourth and short, I think you go for it for the reasons that we were just talking about. And this is a gimme that Patrick O'Brien just simply needs to hit. It's a hitch route outside to your best player, really the best player in the game tonight, and that was just extremely poorly thrown early in this one. First big play of the evening, fourth and two. Thomas, the running back, flanking O'Brien. Play action, Jackson was open, and on the pump fake, he hits him at the 25. That'll move the chains, a big play for CSU, and a gain of 11. And that's a true RPO way around by Colorado State. The security blanket for Patrick O'Brien comes through in the clutch, Warren Jackson. We've got a timeout on the field. Just underway in Fort Collins. Opening drive for CSU. We're back with more after this.
Back here in Fort Collins. Quick toss to Jalen Thomas, a freshman running back. Make it second down and eight. Kyle Johnson with the tackle. As the CSU drive continues. Play number nine on the opening possession of the night. And here's Thomas. Rams led in rushing this season, Kelly, by Marvin Kinsey. We've been told he's been kicked off the team due to a violation of team rules. So that means Thomas, Marcus McElroy, the featured backs down the stretch. And McElroy is just a different guy than Kinsey was. Kinsey was a breakaway home run hitter, and McElroy is a pounder. And Colorado State actually could use a heavy dose of pounding against this Air Force defense tonight. Jackson, bottom of your screen, number nine, has been the favorite of O'Brien. They'll send it for the fullback out of the backfield, and Adam Prentice will keep the drive alive. Captain America with a first down. In a very basic concept outside, you had a curl, and then the fullback Prentice was just going out what's called a flat route. And if that route by Prentice outflanks the defense, O'Brien has to throw it on time. And all of that happened well, and once again, Colorado State driving the ball early in a game to perfection once again. McElroy checks back on the field. Rams can pick up a first down inside the two. McElroy straight ahead, right through the A-gap, lost the football. The ball popped out inside the five. Rams think they recovered it, let's see. You know it's a scrum at the bottom of that pile. Yeah, there's some things going on under that pile that are illegal. And the first bounce of this game, important moment, goes to Colorado State, it would appear. McElroy is typically that sure-handed running back, rarely puts the ball on the ground. And as he breaks through that second level, I think he gets a helmet. That second defender for Air Force got the helmet literally right on the football. And Typically, ball security is about the guys you don't see. You can protect it against that first wave. It's the second wave that will get you. Fagelum popped it out of there. And here's Thomas after a gain of eight. Stacked up at the line and no gain on the play. Fagelum got there as well as Grant Donaldson. Replacing the injured Lakota Wills in the starting lineup tonight for the Academy. And Roy, the situational red zone offense is where you start to feel a little of that early pressure of Air Force's offense. You have to get touchdowns down here. You can't settle for field goals. So a vitally important three, third and three early in this game down deep in the red zone. Jackson, bottom of the screen, the red zone target. Here comes the fade. Poked away and Jackson lost sight of it. It'll bring up fourth down. Now Zane Lewis got a mid on it. You have a 6'6 receiver. This ball needs to be up in the rafters and give Jackson time to go up and get it against Zane Lewis. That was poorly thrown. It was a, a fade back shoulder in a sense, but you got to throw it upstairs and allow Jackson at 6'6 to go get it. Are you surprised they're going for it here? This is an early decision based on the way Air Force plays offensive football. They'll motion Warren Jackson to the opposite side of the field. And roll out O'Brien, the throwback. There's the tight end, Trey McBride for the touchdown. A brilliant play call on fourth and short. The influence of Air Force's offense is seen early in this game because Mike Bobo has to roll the dice. You got to get TDs instead of threes. And Trey McBride is going to have to be stealth like on the backside. Two offensive linemen pulling out. Everything looked like it was to the right. It really was somewhat of a rub play outside. And O'Brien sold it well also and impeccably well executed early by Colorado State. Third touchdown grab of the season for Trey McBride. And on the opening possession of the night, CSU with an Air Force-esque drive. 
75 yards in 14 plays. Andy in seven. know the drill by now Tuesday 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN the ESPN app the exclusive reveal the next college football playoff top 25 rankings Reese Davis and company break them down from top to bottom coaches reactions as well it's a live interview with committee chairman Rob Mullins 7 o'clock Eastern on Tuesday look at our Saturday storylines the big news to a tongue of Iloa according to the athletic a dislocated right hip out for the rest of the season you got Georgia leading Auburn Minnesota may not be undefeated by the time this night ends, Kelly. Yeah, and we actually saw that one coming. Iowa, especially at home, plays extremely well. And we saw that defense for Iowa up close and personal, but heart-wrenching with Tua Tungabailoa. That is, that is sad for that young man. It was a sack from behind, or rather as he got rid of the football, came down awkwardly against Mississippi State in Starkville. Certainly our thoughts with the Tunga Bailoa family. Benjamin Waters back deep to receive as the kick. Karam's out of bounds. Braxton Davis with the infraction. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. First down, 35 yard line. We'll check in for the first time tonight with Kevin Connors. Kevin. First and ten. Fighting Matt Campbell's find away in Ames. How about it? They play a lot of tight games in Ames. Our first look at Air Force's option offense. And a handoff to Caden Remsburg. And that's big yardage on first down. Cameron Carter with a tackle, but not before he picked up eight. And so the order of the day is quite simple in terms of assignment, but difficult in terms of executing it. You have to stop number 34, Timothy Jackson, or Colorado State has simply no shot tonight. And that was Jackson with the carry, the fullback. He's held the hot hand the last four games. He's rushed for over 100 yards in each contest. Officially a gain of seven straight ahead, and that should be good enough to move the sticks. Donald Hammond the third, the Air Force quarterback out of Hampton, Georgia, junior. Played a couple of sports in high school, Kelly, football, baseball, ran track, and majors in the most difficult major at the academy, aeronautical engineering, and he carries a GPA of over 3.0. He walks into the room, he's the smartest man in there. Yeah, let's not ask him questions because we won't understand the answer he gives us anyway. On the keeper here, bolted down quickly. And he'll lose a yard, maybe more. Daquan Jackson chopped him to the turf. In Colorado State, the more you see the ball go from inside to the outside, the better it is for Colorado State defensively. It starts with the fullback dive and then it's it's all hands on deck, and if you can get penetration defensively, tackles for loss certainly are your friend against the triple option. Remsburg brings in the pitch, makes a nice cut. It'll be third down and short upcoming. Tron Folsom the tackle. Let's take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players for tonight's game. And Air Force, their fullback is the center of attention, Timothy Jackson. He has more speed than typically you find at the fullback position. And Daquan Jackson is the quarterback defensively for Colorado State. And if ever you needed a quarterback defensively, you need it tonight against Air Force's triple option. The inside handoff. There goes Remsburg. That'll move the sticks as we check once again with the studio and Kevin Connors. Wow. Still an incredible year for P.J. Fleck. Row the boat. No longer undefeated. Four teams remain in that unbeaten category. 
And a first down carry nets four yards for Air Force. And with Minnesota, don't underestimate the emotional expenditure last week with 18 to 22 year olds against Penn State. And then you turn around and go to a notoriously difficult place to play in Kinnick Stadium. That was tough sledding nonetheless, but Minnesota, you're right, is having a great year. Second down and six after Timothy Jackson picked up four. Birdo checks in now as the B back. He'll get the carry. And a punishing run on well, that a couple of more. It'll be third down and three as Logan Stewart stopped his forward progress. And so Air Force, we know, runs the triple option, and they're going to run the ball like nobody's business. Is about as good as anybody in the plant on the planet. 323 yards. Colorado State has been better since the Toledo game. That number looks bad at 204 yards a game, but if you take out that Toledo debacle, it's down in the 170 category. But nonetheless, it's going to be a yeoman's effort here tonight, Colorado State defensively. Birdo straight ahead on third down, will come up one yard short. Fourth down and one, Jamal Hicks wrestled him to the turf, and let's see what the Falcons decide to do, Kelly. Oh, well, they have an offense that literally is made for fourth and short. And especially in a place on the field that typically you would go for it right here anyway. The first fourth down situation for Colorado State defensively, and these are your opportunities to get off the field. Just the second possession of this football game. Rams converted on two fourth down opportunities on their opening drive. Let's see what the Falcons do here. Birdo dives ahead. Only needed a yard. He'll gain two, and the drive continues. So Air Force, we know, runs the triple option. So typically, you need to trace the ball from the inside out. The defense has to take away the fullback and force the ball to the perimeter, whether it's the quarterback keeping it or the quarterback pitching it. The more the ball goes outside the hash marks, the better that is defensively for Colorado State. Because if you don't stop step number one, which is the fullback, you have no shot in this game tonight. They certainly didn't stop the fullback a season ago. Confusion in the backfield. The ball pops out. There go the Rams. Kamara has it. And that's going to be a CSU touchdown. Mohamed Kamara, the freshman from New Jersey. The scoop and the score. And there is a flag on the field back near the 48-yard line. Let's check the penalty. This, I think, has something to do with Colorado State's sideline. It may be a sideline warning as opposed to an actual penalty. We'll see how the officials view this one on the field. Dueling on the field, a fumble recovered by the defense for a touchdown. Sideline warning, Colorado State sideline, there's no yardage on this first morning. And I think the, the warning is actually on the head coach, Mike Bobo, who we know he's been dealing with health issues and some numbness in his lower extremities and all that, but he was on the move on that play in the scoop and score by Colorado State. What a turn of events after the fourth down was converted. Air Force with momentum on its side turns it over, a scoop and score. And if Mike Bobo could draw up a start to the game, he would have drawn this up. His offense executed in a methodical manner. And then there was ball handling issues in the backfield. The ball comes out. There isn't any question about that. The only question would be whether that penalty took points off the board, but it seemed to be the sideline infraction that doesn't have yards with it. Officially a return of 63 yards. Manny Jones was able to sneak in there right at that mesh point. Yeah. Dislodged the football. And there were some issues with the motion by Air Force as well. That fly motion back was supposed to be well past the quarterback. And in a sense, they turned and three guys ran into one another. And Troy Calhoun, I think, is just wanting an explanation of why is there a yellow flag on the field, apparently against Colorado State, but they still get points on the, on the board. Well, it's 
essentially a sideline warning, and the official has to mark it in some form, and he does it with the with the flag as opposed to his hat or something like that. And Mike Bobo says, I promise, next time I will be more nimble and get out of your way. <laughs> Indeed. Now, Mike Bobo. First of the game. His team got off to a one in five start this year. A lot of rumblings of what was happening here in Fort Collins. And tell you what, they have turned the corner in so many different ways. So we're being told right now, Troy Calhoun thinks there were too many players on the field on this sequence, and he wants a review. Well, there's 11 right there for Colorado State defensively on our screen. And you can count them out by yourself, but that wasn't what the penalty was. You saw the 11 players and the penalty was Mike Bobo wasn't nimble enough on the sidelines and Troy Calhoun in wanting the further explanation actually cost himself, his team, a timeout. David Alvarez leading our Mountain West Conference officiating crew tonight. After all of that, score will remain 13-0. Rams haven't defeated the Falcons since 2015. Maxwell Padus gone for the extra point. And what a start for CSU, our new score. 332 to go in our first quarter. 14-0. The Rams out in front of their front range rivals, Air Force. Mohamed Kibera from 63 yards out, the scoop and score, Rams in business. ESPN College Football is presented by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. And in part by the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Offers available for a limited time. Located about a half mile from campus, Totally 80s Pizza offers a trip back in time with an enormous collection of 1980s memorabilia. Back at Fort Collins, fast start for the Rams. Here inside Canvas Stadium, Kelly Stoffer, Lauren Sisler, Roy Philpott, Muhammad Kamara scores his first touchdown at CSU moments ago on the scoop and score. And the Falcons in their four game winning streak searching for answers early. Braxton Davis. Benjamin Waters calls for the fair catch. Falcons will have it from their 25. Timeout on the field as we step aside. Well, don't forget the Disney Bundle is now available. You get ESPN Plus with great content like NFL Primetime, UFC, NHL, and the 30 for 30 library. Plus, you get Disney Plus and Hulu. It's an amazing package of movies, sports, and shows. Go to ESPNPlus.com to sign up now, and I'll tell you this, Kelly. It's a big topic of conversation in the Philpot household. Disney Plus, a big deal. First and ten for Air Force. Donald Hammond III rushes off right tackle. So we check in once again with Kevin Connors. An impressive wins now for Georgia against Florida, Notre Dame, and now Auburn on the road, Kevin. That's a big deal come playoff time. Hammond back under center. Handoff, far side. It'll bring up third down and two as Hicks brought down Jackson. And that fullback, as we've talked about, Roy, is really kind of the temperature taker. The offense uses to see if the defense has forgotten about that prime position. It's called a fullback. In this offense, it's actually referred to as a B-back. But anytime you get Air Force in a third or fourth down situation defensively, 
It's all hands on deck, and it's your opportunity to make a play to try to get off the field. Rhett Myers checks in as an extra blocker, a former offensive tackle playing tight end tonight. Jackson left side, nothing doing. CSU ready and waiting, Marshawn Cameron, Quinn Brennan from the defensive backfield stacked him up. And even though it's going to be fourth and short, I think Troy Calhoun will pump this football away. But it's the penetration and it's the mentality really that you just have to get after the football and Air Force appears to be going for it on fourth and short. And the Rams cross the line of scrimmage. That may keep this possession alive for the Falcons. Well, Hammond went to the line with a sense of urgency, and a lot of times you're trying to draw the defenders off sides. Oldest trick in the book. Troy Calhoun was going to punt that football away. That was just... Offside defense, number 12, contact the neutral zone, five-yard penalty. The yardage results in a first down. Carter, the guilty party. He'll get an earful. That play doesn't cost Troy Calhoun anything to try. And the undisciplined response by Colorado State extends a drive. And those are the type of moments, Roy, that will really have an opportunity to cost Colorado State this game if they don't aren't buttoned up in those manner, in those ways. Jackson, the B-back. Mentioned his numbers the last four games. First time in Air Force history a fullback has rushed for over 100 yards in four straight. You go back to last year, Cole Fagan put up 260, 260. from that B-back position. 260 right? against the Rams. Right. That's tough. You yeah. see his last four impressive. And Timothy Jackson, the thing that he brings is his length, but speed to the fullback position that typically is doesn't really have a lot of that explosiveness. Timeout on the field here in Fort Collins. Now the freshman, Mohamed Kamara, just had the scoop and score moments ago, needing assistance to exit the playing surface here in Fort Collins. As he was banged up on that last play. So after a four-yard game, Air Force Back on the move. Yeah, Cole Fagan putting up 260 a year ago from that B-back position. Nothing short of incredible with that kind of performance. On the pitch, Rimsburg needs to make a man miss. He cannot. After a gain of one, it'll bring up third down. And that was... Very well played defensively by Colorado State. You stop the fullback. Hammond gets the read to take it outside. Off the pitch key, he ends up pitching it because that defender comes toward him. And then Jamal Hicks runs the alley from that safety position and is a sure tackler out on the edge. Big play for Air Force on third down. Hammond will throw it. Pressure from behind in the pass. Falls well short. Bombeck hit him from behind right as he released the football, Kelly. Defensive end, Bombeck is much better at rushing the passer than defending the run, and this is where you see it. Air Force doesn't really go through progressions. Their pass game is gotcha plays, play action pass down the field, or semi rolls and trying to get the ball out quickly. And Bombeck just beat feet to the quarterback. And they'll run the fake punt, a flag on the field. They snapped it directly to the up back. That was Benjamin Waters. Don't sleep on this game. Ball start. Offense. Not everybody was set for a second. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. Waters had a path for a moment, Kelly. Instead, they're going to back him up five yards, and now Air Force certainly will punt here. And the worst thing for a head coach like Troy Calhoun is to call a trick play, and the snapper just doesn't let everyone get set. It was poorly executed by the snapper. Let everyone get set for a second, which is the rule, and then that play 
had potential. Connor Kirkgaard, long snapper. As Charlie Scott gets it out of there. And Dante Wright let that take a CSU bounce. One second remaining in a fast moving first quarter. Rams will have it at their 19 after a punt of 42 from Scott. This game will fly by. Air Force, you know, is going to possess it and execute it. Time of possession is their middle name. And thus far, Patrick O'Brien and Mike Bobo have been on the same page. And Colorado State's offense has executed well. Good start for Patrick O'Brien. Thrown for a touchdown. His defense has performed at a high level so far as well. Kelroy, the running back for CSU. And on the final play of the quarter, he'll pick up four yards. Meeks brings him down. A good start for the Rams playing at home. A couple of early touchdowns on the board. The first to Trey McBride, his third of the season. And then the scoop and score moments ago, Mohamed Kamara from 63 out. Lead is 14. Now the 2019 season started with Colin Hill, the redshirt junior from South Carolina under center. Started the first couple of games, then tore his ACL for the third time against Arkansas, Kelly. And right now he's trying to do his best job coaching up Patrick O'Brien on the field. Yeah, very important communication between Colin and Patrick. Patrick talked to us about that yesterday. We'll keep an eye on that to see how that goes this evening. We talk about unlucky. Colin Hill tearing the same ACL three times. Dump off to Thomas. And a nifty move will net a first down as he stopped at the 30 by Michael Purcell. Yeah, exactly, Roy. Do the math on Colin Hill. The same ACL three times. I'm not sure what Colin Hill has in there at this point in time, but Colin still wants to play the game, so he's working hard to get back. In the meantime, he's Patrick O'Brien's best cheerleader and probably gives him the best advice when he comes off the field. O'Brien said this week to us, very thankful he's on the sidelines. As O'Brien escapes, for a quality pickup on first down, give him nine yards. As Fedgel and Meeks combine to make the stop, stop the forward progress. And Patrick O'Brien has gotten progressively better, no doubt about that. And his eyes were as wide as Thanksgiving saucers when he came in the game against Arkansas when Holland went down. But it's been progression since then. Better decision making, better control of the huddle, better command of the verbiage of the offense results in better production from that position. Well, O'Brien has been through a lot as well, starting his career at Nebraska. Came to CSU, was not named the starter after making that important decision. Thomas needed a yard for the first down. He'll pick it up. That'll move the chains. And he said, you know, it was tough for a couple of months. I had to lean on my parents. They had to kind of talk me through some things when I wasn't named the starter. And Colin Hill returned to that spot after regaining health from last year. And Roy, I, I've been there when you have that moment where you, you kind of say, am I good enough? You know, you've been through a heated competition. You've already moved from one school. And then you don't win the job. And you're just like, you know what? Maybe this isn't for me. And mom and dad were there for him. And he knew he was one play away, and here he is, and he's playing really the best football of his life currently. And for the first down pickup, Thomas, physical run crossing the 45. St. Louis on the wrong end of that collision. That's a gain of six. You know what's happening right now, Roy, for Colorado State offensively? They have an attitude in the run game that you know, Mike Bogle told us that their assignment sound up front, they're just not that dominating. They get a hat on a hat, but sometimes those hats don't move very far. But I think right now there's a good fit up front, and you're running with attitude behind those guys up front. That's the run game. It's not just the offensive line or a running back. It's both of those in sync with one another, and you're seeing it early in this one for Colorado State. Right in motion. He'll swing it out his direction. 
Lost the handle a couple of times and nearly intercepted. A lot happening in that sequence. Jeremy Fedulum got a fingertip on it late after Wright bobbled it. And this is an area that Patrick O'Brien has to get better. And he's working on it, so he will. It just has to be a more catchable pass to a wide receiver in that position. It's down around the knee. It's a low, hard throw that literally bounces off of Dante Wright's knee. It has to be more catchable, more accurate, and then Dante Wright can square his shoulders and get upfield. Third and four, O'Brien with a clean pocket. Rifles a pass, it's caught. The tight end has it. There's a flag on the field. That is enough for the first down. He gained five yards. Let's check the penalty. This might be on McBride 85 for offensive pass interference. He came out of that break in a hurry. You told me this week you think McBride has NFL potential. I, do. I don't know what his speed is like in terms of combine type stuff. He's a youngster still. Pass interference. Offense, number 85, 15-yard penalty. Still third down. So McBride is going to run an out route, and you want to create separation, but you can't do it illegally, and McBride's going to push off. You can't extend the arms. You can run into the defender, make that collision work for you, but you can't extend the arms. The extension of the arm is when the flag comes out, and that's what we saw right there. So instead of a first down in plus territory, it's third down and 19. See if the Falcons dial up some pressure. Here it comes. O'Brien sidesteps one defender and is pulled down back at the 16-yard line. Nearly lost the football. Shawzik got there. Jake Shawzik, the senior from Tucson. Bad decision by Patrick O'Brien. That clock has to go off, and you simply have to throw this ball out of bounds and not give up that sack yardage. Right here, abort the play. A punt is a really good thing. You just can't give up that fill position before you punt it. Well, speaking of punting, Ryan Stonehouse, one of the best in the country, shows off that incredible leg strength here. And that ball was fumbled by Ben Peterson. He quickly corrals it at the 16. After a punt of 61 yards, Air Force football after this. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. In the middle of downtown Fort Collins, the buildings of Old Town Square served as a model for Disneyland's Main Street USA. Beautiful scene, just right up the road. Kelly Stoffer, Lauren Sisler, Roy Philpott. Wind is gusting, the temperatures dropping as Remsburg is corralled in the backfield. Kelly, he's going to lose two yards on first down. Folsom and Bates brought him down. And when you see multiple defenders to the ball and really Air Force's offensive players are almost out of the screen, that is a huge sign early for Colorado, the way Colorado State is playing defensively. Officially a loss of one. Rams playing well at home, riding a three-game winning streak. Hammond will throw it across the middle. A dangerous pass. Looking for Gerard Sanders. Andre Neal in coverage. And he was blanketing the receiver that time. So that's what happens. If you can get Air Force, which is extremely hard to do behind the sticks, then you force them to throw in situations that they don't dictate. They want to dictate the pass game. Catch the defense by surprise when they have to throw it. When they're second and behind the sticks, and now third and behind the sticks, that's when they're not that effective. M&O for two in the passing game so far. We'll throw it again across the middle and incomplete. Waters was open. Hammond threw it behind him. Air Force just simply doesn't spend a lot of time on that in practice. They execute the triple option precisely, but this is behind Waters. The, the timing just isn't right. That ball is slightly out in front of Benjamin Waters, and you have, you're on to something. But that's the 
The pass game is rarely synced up when Air Force has to throw the football. Dante Wright drifts back as Charlie Scott awaits the snap. And a wobbler off the side of his foot. That hit right in the knee, a flag on the field. Air Force is able to grab the fumble. That was Waters. And I'm not sure Wright had an opportunity to catch that cleanly. I think you're exactly right. I think it's going to be kick-catch interference on Air Force. There have been two bounces in this game, this being the second one that may both have gone in Colorado State's direction. Kick catch interference, kicking team, number two, 15 yard penalty for this ball of the foul, first down. Timeout on the field. I'm not exactly sure what Troy Calhoun is fussing about, but we'll get more on that when we come back. But two bounces in this game, both of them fall in Colorado State's column. United States Army Staff Sergeant Joshua Griffin has dedicated the last 13 years of his life to serving our country and now he serves as an accountability leader to his teammates on this Colorado State football team. His message to them is this. When you try to learn from the hard times, you enjoy the good times, but you prepare for the future. And I think this is what I would tell anybody. Um, don't get too you know, wrapped up into the bad things that happen to you. Bad times will come, but also don't get too uh, enamored and, and, and excited about the good times, because the good times won't last. So you have to be very flexible. My best one thing the military has taught me is to be very flexible. Now one of the big leaders for this CSU program, Joshua Griffin, oldest player in college football, Kelly, and really done a remarkable job orchestrating a turnaround from the inside out here in Fort Collins, especially with the edge accountability program instituted by this veteran coaching staff in the offseason. You can't overemphasize the impact that Joshua Griffin has had within that edge program, and you can't talk to Colorado State coaches or players without hearing about that program. Right in motion, O'Brien to the air, looking for Jackson, it's incomplete. You may be asking yourself, well, what is the EDGE program? Very simply, this effort, discipline, gratitude, excuse-free that's on the field and away from the gridiron as well. Look, the EDGE program has been a catalyst for this Colorado State football team. Joshua Griffin, a driving force whose military and life experience has really brought a perspective like none other. He told me there are two things you can control, attitude and effort, and that's what he continues to share with his team time and time again. Third down upcoming for the Rams. Certainly a lesson that all of us can listen to. O'Brien bundled up at the 35. Kyle Johnson got there first for Air Force. This is another interesting decision for Mike Bobo. It's in that territory where you certainly don't benefit from punting it. The wind in this case will be at the kicker's back, so you need to get points on the board right here. Here comes Caden Camper for a 53-yard field goal attempt. So Mike Bobo electing to try for the three points. Camper. A pretty stiff win, sorry about that, Roy, at the back of Camper, which should help him greatly. He did knock one in from 50 yards out against UNLV earlier this month. Wind at his back, plenty of distance on the kick, and it's no good. He missed it wide left. So Camper now 7 of 13 this season, and a win for Troy Calhoun. The Academy trying to mount a comeback on the road in Fort Collins. They'll get it back after this. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. Colorado State Rams student section is already on the watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Get the committee's attention by using the hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. Chilly night in Fort Collins. Air Force with a football, a big possession, trailing by 14. 
Hammond will keep it a nifty move, and there he goes. Donald Hammond, the Georgia native, ushered out in plus territory. Jamal Hicks was there. That's a gain of 22, however. I think this is a really important time for Colorado State as a whole, let alone their defense. And Hammond is going to take it outside, and then the defender is kind of stuck in no man's land. Do I take the quarterback? He kind of feathered it, the defender did in the end, and Hammond's rightly so. If the defense hesitates, the quarterback is taught to get upfield in a hurry, and Hammonds does it right there. Now Folsom missed the tackle. Air Force takes advantage. Remsburg inside the 40 as we go back to the studio and check in once again with Kevin Connors. Baylor right now representing the Big 12's best playoff hopes pending what happens tonight. Oklahoma that one loss already a close win against Iowa State a week ago. At the seven yard game by Remsburg Here come the Falcons. And the triple option Hammond stacked up and he'll be stopped just short. And that was the load option variety which simply means that instead of the dive to the fullback is option number one the fullback actually escorts the quarterback outside so the quarterback can step behind that fullback out on the edge or he still has the pitch option intact as well but Colorado State feathered that out to the sideline really well Falcons one of five on third down tonight Jackson straight ahead and he'll pick up the line to gain and then some Devin Phillips got there but that'll move the chains now Roy you and I were talking about at the commercial break this has kind of an important moment written all over it Air Force got this ball at the nine minute mark in this second quarter and it just seems like the type of drive where they use all the clock get a touchdown and feel really good about themselves only being down seven going into halftime. Falcons will get it to start the third quarter. Hammond off the back foot. Pass will be caught. There's Waters and there's a touchdown. First completion of the night. A 31-yard scoring strike for the Academy. Colorado State safety Jamal Hicks was there to make the play on Waters. And I think there was a little bit of indecision by Hicks right at the very end. Do I intercept the ball or potentially arrive, arrive at the receiver Waters a little bit too early? Hicks is in perfect position, but just didn't play it well in the end. Jay Conkey on for the extra point. Flag on the field. Let's check the penalty. The AT was good. What a response for Air Force trailing by two scores on the road. <coughs> Offside. Defense number 43, that penalty is declined. Kicks good. Timeout. Asking himself right now. Split at the bottom of the screen. O'Brien will look his direction, step up in the pocket. Down he goes, back behind the 35. The football comes out and Air Force recovers. DeMonte Meeks brought him down. The ball popped out and talk about a change in momentum in this one. And Patrick O'Brien, I think, made a bad situation worse because the, the protection was dreadful from the beginning. And right at the very end, I think Patrick O'Brien had thoughts about pitching this ball forward. And he exposed the ball to de defenders and he ends up coughing this ball up. I think he's getting that ball ready to pitch forward which would not have been a good decision. And at the end of the day, the ball ends up on the carpet. Patrick O'Brien has to be more buttoned up, and he understands that that was a bad decision right there. Jake Shazik recovered the fumble. Air Force in business in plus territory. Jackson straight ahead as we go back to Kevin Connors in the studio.
Kevin, thank you very much. That Baylor OU game over on ABC as we speak is Hammond. Plunges over the left side. It'll bring up third down and short. Jamal Hicks brought him down. So when you're play calling right now for Air Force, I think Troy Calhoun has to be asking himself, are we going to go for it on fourth down, which would determine kind of the, the flavor of our third down call. And we're going into a stiff win if we want to try to kick a field goal on fourth down. So I think this might be two down territory right now for Air Force if they need it. Jackson, the B back, lines up directly behind Hammond. 10 in the box for the Rams on third down. And they'll pitch it out. Remsburg with real estate. Caden Remsburg keeps the drive alive. Brought down at the 20 by Daquan Jackson. That'll move the sticks after a gain of seven. Roy, you mentioned it. 10 in the box for Colorado State. Stop the inside run, force it to the edges, and then you have to rally to the football, and nobody is there to D up. Rimsburg out on the edge and what a really good decision and quick decision by Donald Hammond right there Hammond directing traffic the triple option attack Timothy Jackson plunges ahead and back to the line of scrimmage maybe a gain of one as Manny Jones and Marshawn Cameron wrestled it down and a little hurry up in a sense out of Air Force which looks somewhat strange to see them hurrying up but tried to catch Colorado State off guard defensively and it didn't work. Falcons seven and two this season bowl eligible for the first time in three years. Athletically one of Troy Calhoun's better clubs. Haven Birdo stopped short of the 25. And that was Cameron Carter. So time winding down. Air Force. Two timeouts remaining after this stoppage. So a very eventful Saturday about ready to conclude, Kelly. If you think back to the injury, Kevin Connors just mentioned it to Atunga Bailoa. Out for the rest of the season, according to the athletic with a dislocated right hip. How does that impact Alabama's playoff chances in your mind? Well, it moved them down my top six for that very reason. I think Alabama was already on the outside looking in, but if that dude isn't taking the snaps for that team, I think the door is closed. And it also hurts the Crimson Tide's chances that Auburn lost today at home to Georgia. So now that lack of additional quality yeah. win, not appearing in the SEC championship game, even if you beat Auburn in the Iron Bowl, it's not as big of a deal. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. You're you're all over it. Those were really, really bad developments for Alabama with the first one being the fact that uh, Tua got hurt once again. Third down and five for Air Force. Falcons with two timeouts remaining. Winner of this game will get the Ram Falcon Trophy. And that has not gone lost on Colorado State this week leading up to this contest. They want it. Remsburg on the pitch with a lane. Brought down short of the line to gain by Logan Stewart. Former walk-on, a lifelong CSU fan. What a tackle. And another timeout on the field. Logan Stewart from his safety position sees the, the quick read because it's a pitch, and so the ball is in the air, and so the safety really doesn't have anything to read. Ball's in the air. You can immediately diagnose that as an outside run as opposed to all the intricate ball handling inside with that option. I don't know that I like the play call for Air Force. One of the things that Air Force is so good at is the ball handling and the ball is hit a lot of times. But Logan Stewart, you can see, he holds so lemonade and hot chocolate at Hughes Stadium where I play. I probably drank some of that hot chocolate from the young man. Maybe on the sideline, but who's saying? Grew up a CSU fan, was offered a track scholarship here for going the junior college route. 
And now Air Force set for a 31-yard field goal attempt from Jake Conkey. Perfect this season, nine for nine. This one from the left hash. And that trend continues. Falcons close the gap 14 to 10. 105 remaining in our first half. That's a huge win for Colorado State defensively. Anytime you can hold Air Force to three instead of a TD, they are the ultimate drive red zone finisher, 77%. So that's a win for a Colorado State defensively. Well, this season for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. All state make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you once again, all states. I love Logan Stewart's story. Local kid, walk on. He was familiar with U Stadium, as you talked about. I was roommates with the walk on here at Colorado State. Steve Bartello went all went on to be one of the best in the history of this school, but the path that Logan Stewart or a Steve Bartello has to go down in order to be on the field is enormous. A lot of people don't want to pay that price, but good for Logan Stu Stewart. Bryce Honaker kick it away. Anthony Hawkins, who had a touchdown on a kick return against UNLV. We'll watch this one be fair caught. It'll pop out to the 25, so a little bit of time for Patrick O'Brien to go back to work, and he's cooled off, Kelly, after a fast start tonight. And you want to be really, really delicate right here with a minute five left. You only have one timeout if you're Colorado State, so you're very happy to go into halftime with a 14 to 10 lead, so nothing extravagant is the order of the day for Colorado State offensively right here. Nebraska transfer out of the shotgun once again, running Mike Bobo's offense. And he'll throw it. Quick grab, tied in, bobbled it, but brings it in before stepping out of bounds as we check in once again with Lauren. Yeah, I have to tell you, Patrick O'Brien down here not showing a lot of emotion on the sideline after he coughed up the football there on the last, last drive. Trey McBride came over to him, he looked at him, and he said, I'm sorry. And Trey McBride said, man, it's okay. You're good. Let's just get out here and keep playing. Get ready for the next play. Well, McBride just made his second reception. Make it second and three, and O'Brien escapes pressure and has Jackson for a first down. That's crossing the 40, ahead to the 41. And obviously, Mike Bobo isn't listening to me. It's a short two-minute situation, and he intends to get more points. And that was E.J. Scott who made the grab far side. McBride, another reception. He's kept in bounds after a short gain by Milton Buck. Mike Bobo isn't happy about that. Trey, Trey McBride was trying to get out of bounds and thought that he did. And the official called him down inbounds, which meant Mike Bobo had to burn their last time out. That was Colorado State's last time out, correct? Indeed. The clock still shows one, but I think that's just wishful thinking. So 14 to 10, if you're Mike Bobo working with Patrick O'Brien, as we take another look at McBride trying to get out of bounds, what do you try to dial up here with only 43 ticks of the clock left? I think work the sidelines just like they're doing right here. And Trey McBride, if I think the forward progress was deemed to be stopped. And so McBride was said to be stopped inbounds, even though he wasn't down inbounds, he was stopped inbounds. I, I assume that's what the officials were were looking at. But I think you're you work the sidelines, you no longer have a timeout. So the middle of the field is essentially almost dead, except for the fact that you can hit a big one down the middle, get into field goal range, and hurry up and kill it if you're Mike Bobo and his quarterback Patrick O'Brien. Remember Caden Camper missed a 53-yard field goal moments ago. Rams do have the wind at their back. Camper had the distance, just pushed it left. The out pattern, Jackson into plus territory. That's close to another first down. That'll be the fourth catch for Warren Jackson. And well, I think Colorado State can have that as much as they want it right now. If they execute that, they moved Jackson and just let him run a quick out route. 
roll the quarterback O'Brien to him and just put it on him and he steps out of bounds. O'Brien, clean pocket this time, wants it all, loads it up deep. And a pass incomplete. Good coverage far side on the go route. That was EJ Scott on the go route and came up holding that left arm to some extent. But if I'm running a go route, I want to get Warren Jackson matched up one on one outside with a Milton Bug that's 5'9. Get my alpha receiver outside. Look his direction again. Jackson breaking open. O'Brien steps up, lost the football again. And CSU fortunate to recover. That was the freshman Jalen Thomas. And now you have to hurry up and kill it because you have no timeouts left. Time winding down, approaching 10 seconds to go in our first half. And here's O'Brien. Backside pressure, dumps it off. Tight end has it, that'll move the chains, and that'll be the final play of our first half. Well, a lot happening there in that sequence. Two quarters to go here in Fort Collins. Halftime coming up right now. CSU leading Air Force 14 to 10. We'll send it back to Kevin Connors for the Mazda Halftime Report right after these messages. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Nationwide. Start of our third quarter, 14 to 10, Colorado State here inside Canvas Stadium, leading front range rival Air Force. It's been a well-played first two quarters. Great to have you with us as always. Kelly Stauffer, Roy Philpott, Lauren Sisler on hand. And about what we expected, a physical game, kind of back and forth affair in the first two quarters. Colorado State, outside of one bad angle by a safety on an Air Force pass, might have played a perfect defensive first half. And yet I don't know that they feel all that comfortable with where they sit currently. But nonetheless, this is going to go down to who makes the least amount of mistakes in the second half. Well, two hot football teams playing in cold weather. They've won their last seven combined games. And we saw a lot of good football in the first half. So take a look at our highlights. Yeah, the scoop and score on that mishandle of the football in the backfield. Colorado State gets defensive points on the board as they pick that one off the carpet. And it's the bad angle by Jamal Hicks right there. I think the indecision maybe slipped a little bit. But outside of that play, Colorado State has to be incredibly happy with how they play defensively. Donald Hammond had one completion in the first half. It went for the six points you just saw to Benjamin Waters from 31 yards out. Patrick O'Brien, I thought, was better early than what we saw late in the second quarter. I completely agree. I think he was serviceable, didn't make the big mistakes until, until late. He started to try to do too much midway through that second quarter, and he put the ball on the carpet. So it's just doing the little things consistently right if you're Patrick O'Brien. So a wild day of college football still going on strong. We've seen a couple of upsets. Minnesota no longer undefeated as Braxton Davis sends this into the end zone. And we check in for the first time in our third quarter with Lauren Sisler. Yeah, talking to Coach Bobo going into the locker room, he says he loves the way this team is performing defensively. But on the offensive side of the football, he's anticipating that Air Force is going to come out with a lot of adjustments. So he said these guys got to get out quick. They got to get out uh, with those adjustments, and especially on offense, it's going to be critical to get it to Warren Jackson. They're going to look for number nine a lot more here in the second half. I think that's an effective idea. Makes the coaching look better, given his skill set. Right up the gut. There goes Jackson. He's got a first down. Spins his way across the 40. And a good gain on the first play from scrimmage for Air Force. Give him 16. Well, Colorado State wants to get it to Warren Jackson, and... Air Force is going to want to get it to Timothy Jackson that established that fullback early in this second half. And that fullback, Timothy Jackson for Air Force, has more speed at that position than in times past. Tron Folsom banged up on that play. The injured Ram near the 42. Jackson has been incredible 
in recent weeks we documented the numbers earlier. And as Folsom will be helped up. It's interesting. We talked with Troy Calhoun about the be back position and about Jackson's role. And he said, you know, he's not your typical be back slash fullback. And he goes, Roy Kelly, Lauren, we kind of look for guys that have the larger lower bodies for that position, guys that can absorb contact and collisions. I think he literally said big rumps, I think is the way Troy put it. That's correct. Big rumps where their their waistline is below the dinner table when they stand up. I think of the type of guy that they typically have. Jackson is not that at 6'3", 190. He stopped in the backfield here on first down by Manny Jones, a preseason All-Mountain West Conference selection. And Timothy Jackson brings more speed to that position. And that's actually, I think, where Air Force's offense really hit a different gear. They went on that four-game winning streak. They were getting explosive plays vertically from their fullback position. Jackson has good twitch, according to Troy Calhoun. Remsburg will make one man miss, not another. He's corralled and driven down. Remsburg will lose yardage. Jamal Hicks, Manny Jones met him in the backfield. That's the way you defend the triple option. You take away the fullback, Timothy Jackson. You force Hammond to take it to the edge. The pitch man defender forces Hammonds to pitch the ball, and then you have Jamal Hicks like a human missile coming down what they call running that alley right there. And then when he doesn't make the tackle, you have guys hustling from the inside out and blowing that play up. That was extremely well done. And Hicks requiring some assistance leaving the field. Injury timeout, third down and 11. Upcoming for the Falcons. Trailing by four on the road here in Fort Collins. And it sounds like about 17 different whistles being blown on the field as we'll keep it right here. And third and 11 is certainly where Colorado State wants to have Air Force. And now it's finding that play to get off the field. You've done the hard work on first and second down. And now you, if you're Colorado State defensively, cannot allow Air Force off the hook right here. Remsburg gets it on the counter action. Brought down in the backfield. He's going to lose more yardage. Toby McBride got there and wrestled him down to the cold turf here in Fort Collins. Very good drive, needless to say, to start the second half for Colorado State defensively. And it's the last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half a lot of times go a long way to deciding football games. So if you're a Colorado State fan, that series was good for you. Charlie Scott, 38 yards per punt so far tonight. Check the penalty here. The play clock did not reset to 40 seconds. Please put the play clock on 25 seconds. It will start on my signal. Just four penalties between these two teams tonight. Relatively clean contest so far. Troy Calhoun and Mike Bobo. Scott the senior from Greenwood Village, Colorado. We'll turn it over beautifully. Dante Wright retreats. And brought down short of the 20. Good coverage by the Air Force special teams. After a punt of 49, CSU football when we come back. The College Football Playoff Top 25 Ranking Show, Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. Well, a great time of year as we check in with our Saturday storylines. Alabama has now announced Tua Tunga Bailoa out for the rest of the year with a dislocated right hip. Upsets all over the place. And right now over on ABC, Oklahoma getting pummeled by Baylor down in Waco. And certainly that's going to send some shockwaves 
across the college football landscape. Mikel Roy on first down, rumbles his way for a gain of four yards, stopped by Jordan Jackson. Iowa pulling off the quote-unquote upset against Minnesota, even though the Hawkeyes were actually a slight favorite in that contest, Kelly. But certainly, row the boat losing its first game is significant. Yeah, rowing the boat isn't easy to do in Kinnick Stadium for anybody. And the emotional win last week, Minnesota over Penn State, and that had a tough game written all over it for Minnesota. Gelray picks up five. Play action. First reception for Craig Myers. He stopped in bounds after a short game. So the Auburn transfer. 17th catch of the season after missing the first couple of weeks. And Colorado State going to a true run pass option once again. It's the tight zone run inside to McElroy and it off the read of one defender. Patrick O'Brien pulls it and throws it outside to Craig Myers. Important third and two right here early in the second half. The Falcons have scored the last 10 points in this one. Jackson in motion. Thomas gets the call. The freshman running back picks up a first down. Really nice vision and cut by Jalen Thomas just bouncing outside to that next gap. Wasn't a whole lot inside initially, and the true freshman Thomas edges slightly outside, finds a little crease, and ends up with an important conversion. O'Brien under center, 14 of 20 passing tonight for just over 100 yards and a touchdown. And he'll hand it off to Thomas in the backfield. Coaching staff preached a lot of patience this week both with the team and especially at the quarterback position as we check in once again with Lauren. Yeah, that's exactly what Patrick O'Brien said. He needed to remain patient and avoid pressing in this football game. Air Force sustains these long drives, and for a quarterback and an offense of the opposing team, that can build up a lot of pressure out here. And, Kelly, you can probably speak to that. So he has to remind himself every time CSU gets the ball to be patient and execute each play without worrying about how long Air Force has had time of possession. Yeah, and I certainly can speak to it. I never beat Air Force in my career here. So I wasn't exactly successful at being patient, as you just described, Lauren. Yeah, easier said than done. O'Brien will get it to Jackson. Close to another first down. Number nine makes the catch. That'll move the chains. But what patience looks like to Patrick O'Brien in this game, they're making plays like that. Just getting the ball out on time, going through your progression, throwing to the open guy. What patience does not look like is when there wasn't protection in that first half and he's going to shovel the ball forward and he puts the ball on the carpet. That's impatient. Colorado State can't afford that. From the 41, screen pass Dante Wright and Lasso down after a short game. Well, my question for you is you've got Warren Jackson. 6'6", 220 pounds, legitimate down-the-field threat, and they really haven't thrown it his direction a lot tonight on those go routes, and my question is why? Yeah, and that's a good question because I think the one time that, as we see Air Force has a player down, I think it's Bug, number three, the corner that come, came up and made a really good tackle on the receiver on that play. But, yeah, you're exactly right. When I'm going vertical, I'm going to 6'6", 220 Jackson. Has not happened a lot tonight. After a two-yard gain, check on Bug near the sideline. Bug made a really good tackle in open space against Dante Wright, and that's not easy to do. Junior from Gilbert, Arizona, requiring assistance off the field. Entry timeout as we step aside in Fort Collins. Well, an awesome story as Special Olympics recognize Colorado State today as an ESPN Top 5 Unified Champion School. Among the many events over the past few days, the school and Special Olympics held a tailgate celebration pregame with participation in the Ram Walk afterwards. Festivities culminated at halftime just moments ago as CSU was presented with their Special Olympics National Unified Champion School banner. 
in an awesome show of support for one of the great organizations in our great country today. So out of the timeout, CSU with the football facing a second down and eight, holding on to this four-point advantage. Lauren Sisler, Kelly Stoffer, Roy Philpott, Marcus McElroy dropped after a short gain as we send you back to Kevin Connors. Well, that crowd had something cooking earlier today yeah. down on game day in Waco. So you know that that place is rocking. An 18 point advantage shortly before halftime. O'Brien off the back foot launches that one out of bounds. So on third and five, CSU going to be forced to punt this one away. And the pressure once again, this time it was by Grant Donaldson, the outside linebacker, came from the outside, looped back up inside, and hit Patrick O'Brien right in the midsection as he's releasing the football. So the MO for Air Force defensively is if they can get the opposition in a pass down, they bring pressure. Typically, they would rather play coverage. Here's Stonehouse, and it's monster leg. No, they're going to fake it. Adam Prentice, the up back, stacked up in the line of scrimmage. Air Force ready and waiting, and that one was stuffed. Well, Lauren just got done talking about Colorado State needing to be patient. This isn't what patience looks like in this game. I think you play for field position. Don't risk it early right here. And this just wasn't very well designed, executed, and it wasn't really a surprise to Air Force defensively. Christopher Herrera stopped Prentice right as he crossed the line of scrimmage, and here comes Air Force. Hammond wants it all instead, throws an interception. It's going to be picked off by Cameron Carter. Back into plus territory and talk about another wild swing in momentum. First interception of the season for the sophomore from Tucker, Georgia. Air Force's pass game is a gotcha play action pass game off of their vaunted rush game. And I have zero idea where Donald Hammond was throwing this football. There was one deep over route coming from the left to the right. And Hammond elects to hit Carter right in the breadbasket. I thought that's where he was going for a moment. It's a 19 yard return by Carter. And a lot happening here in just the last two minutes. O'Brien under center. Mikel Roy gets the handoff. And brought down short of the 30. And Roy, Air Force's pass game is typically play action pass target specific. Cameron Carter is going to react back out of the run block and there just isn't anybody there for Air Force. There was a crosser behind that second level of defense for Colorado State. There was a deep over route, which is essentially a deep crossing route that gains leverage and depth going from left to right, but that was a horrendous decision by Donald Hammond. O'Brien looking Jackson's direction before the snap. Instead, we'll go the other way. Craig Myers, incomplete. Great coverage by Zane Lewis. Craig Myers had a step early, but it was a really good recovery by Zane Lewis. If this ball is thrown out about 18 more inches. You can see how Craig Myers had to turn his body back to the football. It gave Lewis just enough time to close on the ball and break up the pocket. Under seven to play in the third. Rams need seven yards to keep the drive alive here. O'Brien backside pressure down. He goes back at the 45. It was a meeting in the backfield, and Mo Fafita got there first. Big number 99 for the Falcons. 
And what a series of events, kind of emotional swings. This time it's Air Force's defense, and Fafita ends up getting the, the sack, but there was really good coverage on the back end, and Patrick O'Brien was looking for the escape hatch, and instead he runs into a 330-pound Fafita. Fafita, a great wrestler in high school. Told you what Troy Calhoun told us about his mental toughness. What a season he has had at the academy. The punt by Stonehouse. Going to be down? No, they'll say a touchback. Critical call here for a triple option attack. And remember in college, it's where the ball is. It, in the NFL, if the ball doesn't touch in the end zone, you can bat it back. If the ball penetrates the very front of that end zone line, a it's a touchback. Regardless of how athletic the jungle, jungle game was after that by Colorado State. Four-point game, Goodwin and Fort Collins Air Force with the football after this. ESPN. Home of the New Year's Six and the college football playoff. Well, it's going to be here before you know it. A little hot potato being played as we went out to break. And the correct call by our veteran officiating crew. Yeah, right there, that ball penetrates the very front of that end zone line. And that's all it takes in college football. Donald Hammond the third, back at it, running the option. The quarterback keeper will be stopped at the 25-yard line by Kamara. And in the meantime, Colorado State defensively is getting multiple hats to the football. It's all about assignment football when you play the Air Force Academy, and so far so good for Colorado State. Falcons thinking about tempo. Instead, we'll look to the sideline. Air Force second in the country in rush yards coming into this one. Rams. Stack the box and straight ahead, Remsburg. Lucky to get back to the line. Well, Donald Hammond the third, an interesting player. He wants to fly remote piloted aircraft when he's done at the academy. We mentioned the aeronautical engineering major, the toughest curriculum in Colorado Springs. And Hammond's got some work to do tonight, Kelly, to try to direct this comeback. Yeah, he's been making fairly good decisions in the run game couple of horrendous decisions in the pass game, but third and four is typically Air Force's wheelhouse. Jackson, the B-back. Hammond wants to throw it. Lofts it. Incomplete. Waters probably should have reeled that when in. He was covered by Marshawn Cameron. Yeah, third and four is kind of that tweener down a distance where Air Force a lot of times will run it in that situation. And you're right. I think Benjamin Waters had an opportunity at, at this. It's a quarter route that is flattened off a little bit. And he, Waters just kind of short-armed it a little bit. Didn't finish very well on the football. Right back deep to receive this Charlie Scott punt. Averaging just over 41 yards per attempt tonight. And right, the fair catch of the 26. CSU football when we return after a 49-yard punt from Charlie Scott. This week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Go down to the bottom over on ABC. Baylor beating up on Oklahoma 31-10. Wow. And Kelly, Matt Rule wins this game. This clearly orchestrates and proves one of the great turnarounds in college football history given where Baylor was just two years ago at 1-11 in his first campaign. Yeah, and Minnesota jumped way up last week with the win over Penn State, and maybe Baylor does something similar this week on Tuesday night when the new ranking is unveiled. And if that score holds, Baylor really represents the Big 12's only playoff hope. Flag on the field comes in after a four-yard pickup. Meeks made the stop on Thomas. Holding offense, number 71, 10-yard penalty, still first down. 
Not exactly the way you want to start a drive if you're Colorado State. Starting with the first down run, which Colorado State has been pretty effective at doing, but outside it's 77 Keith Williams that gets called for the hole. The run up inside by the freshman Jalen Thomas. But if you're at the point of attack, all eyes are on you and the flag comes out. O'Brien, right, ushered out, crossing the 20. And it feels like both of these teams still kind of trading body blows right now. And who really wants it at this juncture? I think you're right. It, it's somewhat strange. It's We had these haymakers thrown early in the first half. And, and then it's been two guys doing separate rope a <laughs> in the ring since then. Who is going to make that play? to kind of seize the momentum in this game. And that play may come from one of these defenses, judging by what we've seen so far. O'Brien, pitch and catch, will bring up third down and respectable after that holding penalty. Started this drive off on the wrong foot. If I'm Colorado State, and Lauren mentioned this, that Mike Bobo told her coming out of halftime, we have to find number nine, Warren Jackson, and. We've dabbled in that a little bit, but I haven't seen Air Force really cover him much tonight. 6'6", 220, quarterback's best friend. Six receptions for 53 yards for number nine for CSU. And here's O'Brien, floats one. Craig Myers has it, that'll move the chains. Air Force defensively plays what's called quarter coverage. Literally four defenders on the back end, dividing the field in quarters. And then once the receivers run their routes or release into their routes, it essentially becomes man-to-man -man on the receiver in your quarter. And that time, Craig Myers just runs the corner off and then runs an out route. And it was well thrown on time by O'Brien. CSU on the move, they'll fake the reverse. E.J. Scott breaking open near the 20, and O'Brien overshoots him. Zane Lewis was in coverage. Scott had a step for a moment. He did have a step. It would have taken a great throw, but once Mike Popo is encroaching on the midfield, 50-yard line-ish, you see these kind of first down plays. And E.J. Scott is going to run to the post, covered outside and underneath and O'Brien just was a little bit too delicate with the throw and quite frankly I don't mind it if it's not wide open don't risk throwing that into coverage he'll fake the pitch O'Brien will buy some time swing it out incomplete third down and ten upcoming and Air Force starting to clamp down defensively and that's the downside of Mike Bobo wanting to go for that play action pass vertical play on first down is then you're forced to essentially throw it the next two downs and here they are fourth and behind or third and behind the chains Keith Williams the injured Colorado State player Rams lead it by four don't forget coming up tomorrow afternoon we'll have number 15 Florida taking on UConn at Gamble Pavilion in stores. We're talking college basketball. That's at 3 Eastern on ESPN, also the ESPN app. Mike White down in Gainesville's done a great job recruiting. You think back to all the national titles won between these two programs going back to 1999. Should be a lot of fun as basketball kicks into high gear starting tomorrow on ESPN. So Colorado State has had some intermittent success in their run game, and Keith Williams has been a big part of that. He has started at right tackle. Barry Wesley, who typically starts there, moved over to left guard for the injured Newili, the true freshman that had been starting at left guard, was nicked up. Newili is available once again to at least rotate in there, so we're probably going to see 69 out at Right tackle once again in 73. The freshman New Ely is going to jump into that left guard spot, I would imagine. And New Ely's missed the last couple of weeks with a knee injury. Now gaining health. A big play here on third and long. 
It's actually Chase Jackson at left guard instead of New Wheatley, the freshman. Out of the gun, O'Brien. Pressure. Down it goes behind the 40-yard line. Air Force dialing up pressure. The pocket collapsed. Christopher Herrera got there first. Air Force's pressure numbers have been down this year. Only 14 sacks coming into this game. But when they can get you behind the sticks, this is what they do. They crash the pocket, they bend the pocket from the edges, quarterback climbs in the pocket, and then the pressure absorbs him. And Air Force is really good at that. Here's Stonehouse, corrals the high snap. And a rugby-style kick. Take a CSU bounce. Whistle dead inside the 25. You know, Stonehouse a bit frustrated with that effort. The Stonehouse may need to speed up his timing just a skosh because Air Force is getting close to this. High snap, punter has to go off the ground, and there's a little bit of traffic there. Air Force, I think, is up to something. I think they can get a hand on a punt here down the road. We'll have to keep an eye on that, but Stonehouse wasn't very happy with his long snapper on that play. Air Force has won its last four games. Colorado State has won three in a row. Two hot teams in the Mountain Division of the Mountain West. Late pitch, there goes Remsburg. With an alley and brought down crossing the 40. Air Force on the move. It's a gain of 15 yards and injured Ram back at the 26. Send you down to Lauren Sisler. Well, you guys were talking about it looks like these two teams are just out here trading blows, and I think Air Force is really feeling that right now. It was over by the offensive line bench, and Coach said, do what you do in practice. We practice really well this week. Right now, you guys out there, you look like vomit. He actually used the word vomit. So wow. he wants to see these guys come back and play, and he says the good news is we're only down by four. What, what does vomit look like in a uniform? I'm not exactly sure I've it's ever It's not heard real that. pretty. That can't be good, but. Numbers tonight, not what you would expect. The second leading rushing team in the country. Livingston Pagofi requiring assistance to leave the field. For CSU, the backup defensive tackle. Big drive here at the end of the third quarter and perhaps a tone setter for the rest of this one. Rimsburg the running back, Bordeaux in motion for Air Force. And they'll run the option. Rimsburg with a hot hand. Hit hard at the 44. Andre Neal and Tron Folsom brought him down. And that, once again, was the load option. So it isn't always just triple option. The load option is when the one of the running backs loops around and leads outside, and there really isn't a dive option on that play. That time it was Bordeaux that leads outside, and then they still have the pitch quarterback pitch relationship intact. Remsburg, the jet sweep action. Quickly corralled, he'll lose two. Manny Jones and Tron Folsom again. What could be the final play of the third quarter. Yeah, and Colorado State is going to start the fourth quarter with a third and pass down once again by Air Force. A scoreless third quarter in the books in Fort Collins. Good game brewing in the heart of the Mountain West. 14 to 10, CSU still on top. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Nationwide. 15 minutes to go in this backyard brawl. 14 to 10, CSU leading Air Force. The Ram Falcon Trophy on the line tonight in the Mountain Division, and the Rams have been pretty good with a fourth quarter lead this season. Third and long for Air Force. Hammond passes caught, plus territory. Just enough to move the change. Durant Sanders. Just the second reception of the night for the Academy. You simply can't make it this easy defensively. It's third in a pass down in Colorado State. I think Bills Air Force out. A team that doesn't throw the football with precision when they have to. Hammond keeps it and is brought down back at the 49. 
Tron Folsom has been active in the second half, and that continues there. And that's what you have to do when the quarterback gets out to the edge, expanding the football to the sideline. Folsom has to close down that, that area right there. Don't give Donald Hammond time to make a quality decision. Force the issue. Force him to pitch it quickly. And then the secondary can rally to the pitch. Well done by Folsom. Started his career at Troy, now at CSU. Play action, Hammond's pass was batted down, and that play was gonna go for a long game if it wasn't for Folsom again. And what you're referring to is, there was a running back turning up on the wheel route outside, and if Folsom doesn't tip this ball, Air Force walks into the end zone. Folsom's coming off the edge, can't get to the quarterback, affect the throw anyway and there was an Air Force offensive player out standing by himself. Hammond will throw it. The crosser is there. That'll move the sticks and there goes Sanders. Gerard Sanders off to the races. Can he get to the end zone? Touchdown Air Force. What an effort from 50 yards out. And the Falcons have their first lead of the night. Colorado State is playing man-to-man -man coverage on the back end, which you do a lot against the triple option. Sanders is going to come on a crossing route, and the defenders for Colorado State kind of pick each other. That's the point of the crossing route. And then it's all athletic ability and speed for Sanders to take a little one, a short one, and turn it into an explosive, timely play for Air Force. Jay Conkey's extra point is good. Our new score with 13.44 to go, 17 to 14. And the Falcons feeling good on the road in Fort Collins. ESPN College Football is presented by Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. The 2019 marks the 40th year of the Ram Falcon Trophy with Air Force holding 24 to 15 lead. The trophy's origin traces back to Shelly Godkin, a former ROTC commander at Colorado State. Watched the team's play back in 1978. Looked to translate his impressions of the game into an annual trophy. Hawkins on the ensuing kickoff after the Air Force touchdown. A late flag on the field near the 36. Falcons with their first lead in this win, 17 to 14, as we await word on the penalty. David Alvarez leads this veteran officiating crew tonight out of the Mountain West Conference. He's staying warm down there. Chilly night in Fort Collins. Through the return, holding number 27 return team, 10 yard penalty, first down. Roy, let's go take a look at that crossing route and that touchdown by Gerard Sanders. Gonna come on the crossing route, and where the problem begins is when Colorado State kind of runs into one another on that coverage. It's man to man coverage. Air Force rightly has the crossing route called, but that's exactly the point of crossing routes. It's, you, it almost creates a pick, and those defenders run into one another, and, and then the big play, Sanders ends up taking that yards after the catch into the end zone. Yeah, nasty sequence for CSU defensively. More pressure from Air Force. DeMonte makes shot out of a cannon right through the A-gap, and that's a loss of eight. Colorado State's pass protection has been shoddy at best. O'Brien has been at his best when the ball comes out quickly. And you can see the late fire by Meeks, the middle linebacker. Meeks is watching the running back to his side. Running back blocks to the outside. Meeks fires late and has a clear path to O'Brien. 
Well, the Air Force, six sacks tonight. You mentioned they only had 14 for the season coming into this contest, so the pressure has been there. Cal Johnson, another stop here. It'll be third down and long for CSU. Well, CSU has been in the process of shooting themselves in the foot. Self-inflicted, the way Mike Bobo put it yesterday, has been really the theme of the game the last three or four times they've played Air Force. Self-inflicted wounds, the block in the back on the, on the kick return, and then poor pass protection. And here you are at third and 14, and you better watch out here if you're Patrick O'Brien backed up against this Air Force defense. Five-man front for the Falcons, and here they come. O'Brien launches one off the back foot out of bounds. Looking for Craig Myers. He was blanketed perfectly by Zane Lewis. And that was a poor route by Craig Myers, running a vertical route outside. And he doesn't give his quarterback enough room. You have to get a better release at the line of scrimmage, get on top of the defender, and give your quarterback room to fade you to the sideline. There was no room there for Patrick O'Brien to complete that ball. And this game started to take on a definitive Air Force feel. Ever since the scoop and score, 17 unanswered for the Falcons as the punt from Stonehouse. Fair catch is made. Falcons take over with good field position. Air Force leading CSU 17-14. The last big play for the Rams, Kelly, Mohamed Kamara, the scoop and score since then. It's been all Falcons. Yeah, the defense has actually played quite well. It was the one missed tackle slash slip or bad angle by Hicks on this pass by touchdown pass by reception by Waters and and then this it's a crossing route and a gaggle of Colorado State defenders run into one another and Sanders says hold on a second we're not only going to convert we're going to keep running into the end zone right now Colorado State cannot be comfortable with the way this game feels Donald Hammond the third has three completions. Two have gone for touchdowns tonight. As Timothy Jackson barrels ahead to the 45-yard line. So Roy, Air Force inherits this ball right now. Just gone up by three. What Colorado State defensively cannot allow Air Force to do is possess this football. Troy Calhoun's teams in the past would typically turn in this this into like a one possession game now by just going on this methodical offensive march and potentially getting points on the board. Air Force at seven and two, slowly seizing control of this one. Hammond brought down at the 49 by Tavian Brown. He'll pick up four yards. It'll be third down and short. Air Force has gone away from the true triple option. Dive quarterback keep to pitch. And instead, you can see right there, they're rushing the ball on the year like they normally do. Tonight, Colorado State defensively has played really well. But this drive is critical for Colorado State defensively to try to get off the field. Right now is a good opportunity at third and three. The Academy 5 of 12 on third down. They need three yards here. Late pitch to Rimsburg. Brought down right at the line to gain. And this one will come down to the spot. Marshawn Cameron met him with a full head of steam. And I think he's going to be just short, Kelly. Yeah, fourth in the length of a football, maybe. I think Troy Calhoun doesn't even hesitate. I think he puts his quarterback under center like normal, and it's a quarterback sneak with a fullback push. 11 in the box for CSU and a quick timeout call. And they're going to take another look at that last play to see if Rimsburg maybe actually got the first down. I think Troy Calhoun called the timeout for that exact reason. I think he would like this line to gain looked at. Important call coming up. Biggest play of the night coming up for Troy Calhoun and Mike Bobo. Replay allowed the call to stand. It's fourth down and less than a yard. 
for Air Force. If you're Colorado State, you have to alert the hard count once again, but it's going to be quarterback sneak with a fullback push right here, I believe. Hammond with the play calls. Remsburg goes in motion. On the pitch with a crease and a first down. That was really good play calling. You need a, the length of a football and everybody, Colorado State defensively up in those A gaps next to the center, expecting a quarterback sneak and instead, it's the rocket toss outside to Rimsburg and outflank the defense from Colorado State almost immediately. Mike Bobo talked about body language, energy level, especially in the fourth quarter this week. When facing adversity, you can't let them know that you're feeling the pressure of this triple option attack. And right after that fourth down, we saw a lot of the front four for CSU. Hands on the hips, looking a bit tired for the first time. They've got to find a way to get a stop here on this possession because, Kelly, if this becomes a two-score contest, all bets are off at that juncture. Yeah, a two-score contest, and even worse, a patented Air Force offensive drive that obliterates the remaining clock. That's what Mike Bobo cannot stand for. Falcons trying to seize control on the road. Looking for four consecutive wins against their front range rival, CSU. Donald Hammond bolts ahead. It'll be third and short upcoming. He was tackled by Bates. Colorado State has done the first thing. Funnel Air Force to a third down play of any kind. Third and two isn't bad. So now you have to make a play right here. It's been a while since we've called Timothy Jackson's name. He's the B-back, number 34 in white. And Air Force has gone to what they call the rocket toss, a toss outside lately in situations like this. He'll pitch it out, Remsburg, with an alley and another first down. Fastest player on this Air Force offense. He has elite level top end speed, Kelly, and you saw it there. So Air Force is expanding the offense. They establish the fullback when the fullback is taken away. The Donald Hammond continues outside. The pitch key attacks the quarterback, and the quarterback Hammond immediately pitches it back to Remsburg. So Colorado State is getting to the expanding the Air Force offense outside. Now they have to defend the pitch better. Eighth play of the drive, play action, Hammond. Wide open is Air Force for an easy touchdown. It's Benjamin Waters again. Donald Hammond the third has completed four passes tonight. Three have gone for touchdowns. It's that incessant, somewhat monotonous pressure of defending all the bells and whistles and the triple option for Air Force, assignment football defensively, and then your eyes go bad for one play, and Air Force is standing in the end zone. Conkey on for the PAT after the 58-yard eight-play drive in just under five minutes. For Air Force and movement up front, most likely against Colorado State. Offside defense, number 94 with contact, half the distance try, number one and a half. Devin Phillips with the infraction. How about Air Force on the road? Seven and two, they've won four games in a row, trying to make it five. And Conkey's extra point makes it 24 unanswered points after trailing by two scores. Benjamin Waters had two touchdowns on this season coming into tonight. He's got two this evening. 
And he has been rock solid for Air Force here at Fort Collins. Falcons lead it by 10. 50 or famine kind of evening for Donald Hammond the third the junior from Hampton Georgia three touchdown passes Kelly that's a career high he's also counted for two turnovers four of ten through the air none of that matters when you're leading 24 14 however he'll take the good with the bad Rams have some work to do fair catch called for as we go back to the studio and Kevin Connors That one's starting to heat up in Waco. Ole Miss challenging LSU's defense, as many teams have this year. O'Brien looking deep. Right, corrals it. Lasso from behind inside the 20, and the freshman Dante Wright comes up with the biggest play of the night for CSU. The double post off of play action, and Wright is the deep post, and the coverage was on the secondary post, which was Warren Jackson underneath that well executed but how about patrick o'brien dropping the dime this has been a colorado state offense that has gone dormant since that really good first drive that was a gain of 58 yards colorado state you mentioned the offense has really been stuck in reverse since that scoop and score right running open on the wheel route towards the end zone for the touchdown just like that, the Rams are back in it. Mike Bobo, we've been told this before, we've witnessed this in person, is an absolute master play caller. And there's a good example of it. Incredibly well-designed plays back-to-back -to, -back to get Colorado State back in this thing. The first one, Roy, is the first time I can remember Colorado State going in the I formation, and then it's the play-action pass. Wright is going to run the deep post. Jackson, the underneath post, collects the free safety. And then O'Brien drops it in the shirt pocket of Dante Wright. And then it's Dante Wright coming on the fly motion. And then Air Force defensively drops that guy. And you can see Air Force scrambling coverage to find number 22, but a little bit too late. First points for CSU since the first quarter. Dante Wright, the talented freshman. Came on his official visit here in Fort Collins. Met with Mike Bobo, he was really quiet. Coach Bobo said, I wasn't really sure if he wanted to come here. So he goes back to his Florida hometown, talks with the family on the phone. Parents say, hey, Dante wants to come to Fort Collins, Mike. And he said, no, I don't believe it. Put Dante on the phone. You have him tell me that man to man. And sure enough, Dante Wright hopped on the line. He said, coach, I'm coming. He said, all right, we want you. And Colin Hill. Very appreciative of that last sequence. His team right back in it, Kelly. Yeah, Colin Hill certainly can appreciate the throw by Patrick O'Brien sitting right there with the, the locks flowing in the wind. That was really good stuff. 6.36 remaining. Plenty of time. Rams have three timeouts. And now Air Force, who's been in control here in these last two quarters, gets the football back with Donald Hammond III running the ship. Falcons 2-0, one possession games this year. CSU searching for that first victory. And see what Troy Calhoun wants to dial up here, the former Air Force quarterback. Yeah, and see what Colorado State can come up with defensively because this is the time in the game where that incessant getting cut to the ground and that 
run game from Air Force starts to pile up on the defense. Timothy Jackson makes one man miss, keeps the play alive, churning the legs. And on first down, he'll gain 11 yards. And one man missing becomes, you know, from a two or three yard run becomes seven or eight or ten. And that begins to happen against Air Force historically in the fourth quarter. So Colorado State has to regroup defensively and decide that it's about physical, keeping your feet, rallying to the football. And when the ball's on the ground, they surely have to jump on it. Air Force, 172 rush yards. Inside handoff, all kinds of real estate. Remsburg ushered out of bounds near the 48-yard line. Andre Neal got there, but he'll pick up 11 more yards and another first down. And so it's still the run game from Air Force, but it's more of the constraint type of plays. This is a gap scheme. You have two offensive linemen pulling from the right to the left and leading Rimsburg to that side. That's much different than defending the triple option that we've seen multiple times. That number at the bottom of your screen inching closer to 250. That's been the magic number this year for Air Force. Peterson in motion. They'll run the option. Hammond into plus territory. And that's one thing that I don't know that a lot of people really appreciate about Air Force. They talk about the the triple option. Troy Calhoun calls it the flex bone option because I think that's better for recruiting. But it's a diverse run game that's really hard to defend. Injured Ram back at the 47 yard line. Busy weekend of college football. We remind you, Sports Center headed your way later tonight from Los Angeles after Arizona, Oregon. Linda Cohn and Stan Barrett will have an update on the entry to Tua Tunga Bailoa, the effect it could have on the playoff race. Plus, after Saturday's results, Heather Denich on the Pac-12's playoff prospects and a report from Colin Kaepernick's workout as well. Sports Center after college football on ESPN and the ESPN app. Pac-12's in the playoff race, as far as I'm concerned. Oregon and Utah have been impressive both with just one loss and they're heading perhaps to a de facto entry into the playoff in the Pac-12 championship game. And a lot of football left to be played of course as well. Second down and seven for Air Force approaching five minutes to go. Donald Hammond content to let that play clock run all the way down. And this is where, as a defense, you feel you're be being suffocated. Air Force is just possessing the football and just trying to literally take the life out of this game right here. Seven seconds. Heads up play by the veteran quarterback on the toss. Remsburg with an alley. Caden Remsburg. Brought down inside the 20, and the Falcons in business once again. Logan Stewart tripped him up. And this is called the rocket toss. And the ball is in the air quickly, so it's a quick read by the defense. The defense arrives on time. They just don't make very good plays on the football when they get there. And Rimsburg, as you talked about earlier, Roy, he has legit speed. He was a state champion in the 100 and 200 meter in the state of Kansas. And so if you don't tackle him well and he can get vertical, he will gash you like he did right there. Already over 100 yards on the ground tonight for Caden Remsburg as Jackson plunges ahead. And remember it was Remsburg that mentioned after the early win against CU this year, we want to be the Kings of Colorado. As there's a timeout on the field. That's how we look at it. We're going to play CSU. We're going to beat them. And right now, proving to be somewhat of a profit. I actually asked my insiders in the program at Colorado State whether that found its way to the bulletin board. And oddly enough, it did not. I don't think Colorado State really focused on it. Lauren brought it up with Troy Calhoun, and he didn't even want any part of talking about that. But trust me, there has been a lot of 
smack talking between these two programs over the years. I can attest to that. I wasn't entirely sure that Troy Calhoun would like that statement. He said, have my guys been talking about that? Has that been talked about, the state championship? I kind of just waved it off and moved on to the next question. You were the pot stirrer is what you were in that meeting with Troy. There hey, isn't any question about it. Kelly, if I'm not mistaken, earlier this week what? you said you wouldn't mind stirring the pot a little bit with that quote. You know, that's the old Colorado State ram coming out in me, but I put that aside and I kind of collected myself a little bit. But right now, Colorado State needs to play defensively. Out of the timeout, Hammond wants to throw it. He'll be flushed. Late toss. Rhett Myers corrals it near the 10, and that's close to a first down after a gain of eight yards. Rhett Myers end up just sitting outside, and this is actually an offensive lineman, right tackle converted to tight end. Does a great job of setting down in the void of that zone. Hammond, the quarterback, was headed out to the converted offensive lineman who makes a nice catch. Crunch time for the CSU defense. Air Force trying to seize control once again. Jackson with a hole. Showing the power. Jackson towards the end zone for the touchdown. And he got there. Talk about effort. Troy Calhoun told us, you know, he never gets hit square. And that makes a big difference as he piles up the rush yards. And just the extra effort on this play. And every time that the defense forgets about the fullback, typically the result is a play like that. And Timothy Jackson gets it into the end zone. Right? That's the essence of who Air Force is. When they need a methodical drive, to seize the momentum again, they go on this march, and Air Force is as good as anyone in the country at finishing drives and finishing games. All scoring plays, of course, reviewed. Bob Hubble, our replay official tonight, and to take an extended look as Jackson crossed the goal line at the last minute. We talked to Troy Calhoun yesterday, Kelly, and it was interesting. He mentioned his team, and a lot of times, he questions whether or not they're good enough. Tonight they've been good enough and then some. And this guy, number 34 in white, has been one of the big reasons why this year. Yeah, he's good enough. So the question is, where's the football when something other than the foot or the hand goes down by Jackson? And I think the result is going to stand. I think there's actually indisputable video evidence to confirm this. But Jackson ends up rolling over, I think, a Colorado State defender into the end zone before I think that right knee goes down and the ball is maybe just short. There's a fiber of the pigskin that may have crossed the plane of the goal line there. The question yeah. is, is there enough video evidence there? Is it indisputable to overturn the call? The so field? watch the right knee goes down right there and where's the football? I think it's about six inches short. You say an inch and a half. I think that's a definitive look at it. So I think this is going to be overturned and Colorado State can keep hope alive. What a year for Timothy Jackson, regardless if the ruling on the field is overturned or if it stands. What are, you, are you taking a I, position I think, here? I think it's in, just inside the one yard line. Right. Maybe a foot short, and I think Air Force just got the word that that's probably the case. After further review, the runner's right knee was down, but the ball short of the goal line. It will be first and goal from there. So if you're CSU, you're trying to do anything you can to rip the football loose if you make contact with a ball carrier. And you really can't get the football much closer to the end zone line without it being a touchdown. I said six inches, you said an inch and a half. I think I'm the winner in that one. <laughs> First time all year, I believe, you've proved victorious. I think you might be right. Maybe not. I want a winning streak, though. I think you can say that now. Yes. Just like both of these teams coming into this game. Been a fun contest, an interesting one with wild swings and momentum. Kind of 
what you would expect in the Mountain West. And if Colorado State loses this game, they will lament the fairly sizable mound of missed opportunities. They had their chances and they couldn't do anything with some timely turnovers and a really almost perfect half defensively by Colorado State. And Air Force doesn't need second chances. So the clock winds, 10 seconds remaining on the play clock. Jackson, the be back again for the Falcons. Instead, it's Hammond straight ahead for the easy touchdown. Oh, well, he's thrown for three scores tonight. He'll rush for another one, and Donald Hammond gives Air Force a two-score advantage. To some extent, the inevitable just happened when you're at six-inch line and you have this offense. It's an offense that closes out drives 77% of the time on the year. The ultimate red zone finisher, eight plays, 75 yards, and they maybe more importantly possess the football for over four minutes. Now Colorado Springs located about 132 miles south of Fort Collins as Conkey's extra point is good. It was a really good push up front out of the offensive line for Air Force that almost always is undersized in that sense, but they play with great technique, great fundamentals, and Donald Hammond has been a really good decision maker in the run game tonight. Well, we mentioned it earlier. We sit down with Troy Calhoun. He's always wondering, you know, we're playing teams that have great athletes. Do we have enough speed? Are we physical enough this season? And you and I watched Air Force in recent weeks as you see this comeback nearly complete. Athletically, this team is superior to some of the other squads we've seen from Coach Calhoun in recent years, already bowl eligible. They still have a chance to win the Mountain West Conference. Yeah, they need some help above them. They lose the tiebreaker because of the head-to-head -head with Boise State, but they certainly are still alive in the Mountain Division. Yeah, three-way tie would give them an opportunity. As Hawkins rush it ahead past the 30, brought down there, back to the studio, and Kevin Connors. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing what happens on the blue. Quick toss ahead of the tight end into Air Force territory. And CSU on the move as McBride brings in another reception, his fifth of the night. Rams utilizing tempo from the 43. Backside pressure, O'Brien gets rid of it. Into traffic, and I believe it's gonna be picked off. Intercepted at the five yard line by Milton Bogg. Let's see, there was a fight for it. They're gonna say it's with the Rams, they are. Well, E.J. Scott was able to wrestle it away from Bug at the last minute. It looked like Milton Bug had this interception, at least early, and then E.J. Scott goes up and makes a play on the football right there as the ball's coming down and Bugs can't actually get it into his own core. That's where E.J. Scott takes it away. What a play by Scott. It's a gain of 38 yards. Don't go anywhere just yet. Jalen Thomas left side. Stopped just short of the goal line. Well, I was wondering if that would go to replay review. It did not. Second down and goal for CSU. Still with life. O'Brien dropped the snap. And it stopped short once again. 
And because of that drop snap, Mike Bobo is going to have to use one of the timeouts. This happens at times because of the close quarters and the quarterback, Patrick O'Brien, gets in a little bit of a hurry. The center, Scott Brooks, has to snap the ball and immediately be engaged. And sometimes that seal on that snap isn't good. And O'Brien was fortunate to come up with that one. DJ e. Scott was fortunate to come up with the reception. I'm still not sure how he wrestled that one away. We could hear in the microphone on the sideline some Colorado State fans saying, Ty goes to the offensive player. I don't know that that's actually a thing. This isn't baseball. No, this isn't baseball, but E.J. Scott got it nonetheless. But what an effort. I think Bucks clearly intercepted right there. But if the ball is still exposed, E.J. Scott owns it equally at that point. I'm not so sure about that. What a wild sequence. CSU benefits. Troy Calhoun will undoubtedly have something to say about that as Colorado State goes into the I formation. Prentice, the fullback. Jumbo set. And the run play action. And it's picked off. Trying to spot Prentice in the end zone. There goes Zane Lewis all the way to the other end for the touchdown the pick six for the falcons will seal this one up well we pointed out the i formation and then it's play action pass and adam prentice from his fullback position is going to go immediately into the flat it's a classic play action pass out of a power look on the goal line. But the throw was just a little bit late by O'Brien and it allowed Zane Lewis to undercut the route. It was well defended anyway. I know Mike Bobo didn't want to run the football again and potentially risk not getting it into the end zone and having to burn another timeout. That play was just not well executed with quarterback and receiver. Well, if you're just tuning in, one point tonight, CSU led Air Force 14 to nothing since then. A 38 to 7 run by the Falcons have seized control in this one now. And Zane Lewis does a great job of having eye discipline. He sees the fullback coming out all along, and the goal for the offense is on the play action deep at the goal line that the defense has to sell out and they forget about the blocking fullback Adam Prentice but great discipline by Zane Lewis ultimately gets an extremely long pick six if you're tuning in expecting to watch New Mexico at Boise State we'll send you to Boise as soon as we're done here in Fort Collins and for Patrick O'Brien not the way he wanted to end this night, just when it felt like CSU was going to get back in it. And for St. Louis, first interception of the season. He made it a good one. Yes, he did. So 122 remaining and just a formality as Air Force is going to win its fourth in a row against Colorado State. Fair catch called for and made. Back to the studio and Kevin Connors. Those Boise State Broncos are headed on a collision course at Utah State and Logan, Utah here in a few days. A lot of fun watching that matchup. Broncos control their fate in the Mountain Division. Air Force needs some help to claim the title. We'll take a step in that direction tonight. Sack number seven. They came into this game with 14 all season. Yeah. And a lot of them were that variety right there where there's a concept pass design and it's not there and Patrick O'Brien tries to make something out of nothing and it hasn't worked against Air Force tonight. That was Fafita, the tackle behind the line. E.J. Scott dropped that one. Mo Fafita, big number 99. 
for the Falcons. Had an incredible performance in the win against Army two weeks back, Kelly. Was battling a stomach virus the night before. Could barely keep any food in. Troy Calhoun didn't think he was going to be able to play. Received a couple of IVs the day of the game. Coach Calhoun told him, hey, big fella, you're OK. Stay on the sidelines. What do you know, he sent him out there, had the game of his life, was instrumental in that 17-13 comeback win. Yeah, that effort by Fafita is stuff that legends at the academy are made of. And that is a big dude. He's listed at 3.30, and I saw him on the field. He's a biscuit or two <laughs> on either side of about 2, 3.45. O'Brien flings it. Scott dances out of bounds near the 40. That'll move the sticks, but only 37 seconds remaining. And this game tonight, the, the footing is always a little bit tenuous when you're playing Air Force. And Colorado State had some moments. They seized the moment early, got out to that start that Mike Bobo dreamed of. And then there were other moments that they did not do the same thing. And the opportunities progressively slip away against Air Force's style of play. Send you to Boise State as soon as we're done here. The Broncos, the current leaders in the Mountain Division. Updated look at the standings. Air Force Kelly will improve to 5-1. and one. Colorado State dropped to 3-3. Three and three. So the Falcons still in contention. They want a three-way tie up top where they would have the advantage at that point. Yeah, and you need like uh, Donald Hammond's aeronautical engineering degree to try to figure out what happens when it's a three-way tie. I, I had it explained to me, and I started to get a little foggy upstairs. Comes down to like the fifth tie break breaker in the Mountain West. And yeah, the Mountain West knows what they're doing. <laughs> it's just hard for us to kind of keep up with it. Time winding down. A quick catch. Jackson near midfield. So the Ram Falcon trophy will stay in Colorado Springs. And a big smile for Donald Hammond III, the quarterback who accounted for four touchdowns tonight. Feels good. That trophy has lived in Colorado Springs for a while. One of the Falcons, you think about postseason play, Kelly, is Jackson, the fierce stiff arm. Wherever Air Force ends up, they're going to be a tough out no matter who they play come bowl season. Yeah, come bowl season, you don't really want to face a team, and Hammond certainly is loving every second of that trophy. That's a beautiful trophy, by the way. But yeah, Air Force is a difficult matchup in a bowl game because you have to face this team that enjoys cutting you to the ground for about 60 minutes. Air Force now will claim its 25th win in the Ram Falcon Trophy era. And in the process, fifth victory in a row. Okay, that win over Army was so vital now to win five in a row. Sandwich around that victory, it feels good. One of those losses is they lost to Boise State and Navy. And Navy scores on their last possession. Or Air Force could have been staring at also owning that Commander-in-Chief trophy also this year. Out of the timeout, O'Brien claps for it. And a short pickup. To Thomas. 17 seconds remaining. And now 8 and 2 for the first time in five years. Learning experience again for Patrick O'Brien, the Nebraska transfer, seventh career start. Throw this one away. 13 seconds to go. And 
Patrick O'Brien, by and large, has played pretty well. Uh, he's learned weekly. He's progressed, as you would hope, and was playing extremely well coming into this game. And this game was really going to test his experience because you, as Lauren pointed out, you, you feel like you have to do more as an offense as a whole knowing that your defense is going to be under pressure against Air Force's style of play. And for the most part, he's, his decision-making has been pretty good. Middle of the end zone pass will be broken up by Bug. Air Force just gives you the impression that you have to make every play that there's there to make. And Colorado State had some moments to do that. And when you let them slip away, you start to kind of slide back down the mountain again. And that's really what happened here tonight. Big evening of college football continues next as we send you to Boise State. As the Lobos come calling on the blue turf and O'Brien and his sequence that really has been a microcosm of this game is sacked eight sacks for Air Force to close it down our final score 38 to 21 the Falcons beat the Rams once again for Kelly Stauffer and Lauren Sisler I'm Roy Philpott telling you good night from Fort Collins Colorado